Hello, this is Biff Farrell. I'm a professor in the video production department at Pellisby State, located in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, this lesson will show you how to make a photo ID to tag your work so that when we show them downstairs in the lobby at the Bagwell Center for Media and Art, you guys, your friends will know who you are or which person edited which piece, so then they can so, you know, pat you on the back and buy you an ice cream cone at the cafeteria or something. So, what I'm talking about specifically is this little graphic here at the bottom, okay? A little pixelated when we zoom in, but, uh, you know, this probably wouldn't ever be seen in, like, a broadcast TV scenario, a graphic quite like this, but it'll help us form a bonding community in the media production department. Okay, so the software applications that we're going to use uh, are Adobe or no, just Photo Booth. This comes stock with the uh, Macintosh build, like the OS, like with iTunes. You've got Photo Booth down there in the dock too. Adobe Photoshop. We will mask the uh, image, cut it out from the background, and then we'll composite it in Final Cut Pro. Now you can do this in Avid or Premiere as well, but we're gonna. I'm gonna show you Final Cut Pro. And this, the workflow will be obviously to make a photo in Photo Booth to, like I said, cut it out from the background in Photoshop. And there's three different ways, there's probably like five different ways to do this. I'm going to show you three different tools to accomplish that. You know, this is going to be kind of quick and dirty in Photoshop, so I'm sure that you could do it more efficiently. I've been using Photoshop for quite a while, but I still have a lot to learn. So Photoshop is just kind of one of those applications. And then, of course, in Final Cut Pro, we will composite it in a build it on its track, or in, in the correct track. So the concepts that you will learn or take away from this exercise, you're going to have to visualize and think about where you want to put your image, on which side of the screen, preferably at the bottom. That's kind of mandated. you got to put it as a lower third at the bottom. But you can kind of look up at your work or look up at your name. You can use some subtle hand motions, but we want your image to be you. So people, we want people to be able to recognize you, the editor. All right, you'll also go over masking in Photoshop, compositing, image and wireframe in Final Cut Pro. All right, I'm going to switch over here to Photo Booth now. And, hey, hello. So, if you've never used Photo Booth, it's pretty simple. You know, my laptop has a camera, and you just hit the button, and it takes a picture. Okay, now, watch out for all the crazy filters. We want to be able to tell who you are. Oops, that was not the best picture. I was leaning backwards, but this is the image that I'm going to use for the exercise. All right, so let me hide, let me hide Prezi here, hide, um, let me hide this too. Okay, so here's my image, all right, and every image you take, it's going to appear down here at the bottom. What I would recommend doing is getting the image that you want to use and drag it from these little thumbnail icons to the desktop okay but be careful the desktop is not a good place to store items media assets especially in our computer lab because every time you reboot the machine it erases all the jibber jabber that students have kind of left here and there so you start every boot up with a clean slate so what does that mean that's right, you guessed it. Eventually we will put this on the server and it'll be safe and it'll be in your student folder. Um, but you know, it's gonna take you guys a while to, to make the perfect picture, right? But go for it, have fun doing that. I'm gonna switch over to Photoshop now. Okay, so in Photoshop, you know, to get this image into Photoshop, I'm gonna go to File, Open, Command-O. All right, you can also right mouse click on the image on the desktop and open with and, and get it in here, but, but get it into Photoshop. Now, what we need to do in Photoshop is cut out the background, all right? And we're gonna use, I'll show you the tool in a second, but what we gotta do first is unlock the layer, okay? So notice over here, these are your layers. We only have one layer. And if I cut the eyeball off and on, it doesn't work because it's locked. So I'm gonna cut this, double click on this little lock over here. You guys see we're over here? Double click. And now, you know, I can rename the layer if I want to, and I can change the color, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to hit OK. You know, now it's green. So now when I cut the eyeball on and off, it cuts on and off that layer, which is 
pretty convenient if you have a lot of layers. We've only got one, so I'm just going to keep the eyeball on. Now, we're going to use three different tools to cut, cut ourselves out from the background. All right, so the first tool is just the good old lasso tool. Okay, it is the third tool from the top in the bar, in the toolbar. Now, get in the habit of clicking and holding on all these tools, because in a second we're going to go get the magnetic tool to do like a second revisit touch up. But all these tools have sub tools hidden underneath them, so make sure you kind of go through those. But I'm going to grab the lasso tool and just quickly, without taking too much time at all, just roughly kind of outline my image here. All right, I'm kind of letting go of control. I don't want to spend all day, there's my cat, trying to outline this. Okay, so I'm going to do this, and it's selected. That's what lassoing does. It selects an area. Okay, I happen to select an area that had my photograph in it. Um, this is selected because you see these, like, the, you know, when I was in school, the dancing ants. Okay, these little black and white dancing ant icons. But But that means it's selected. So if I hit delete right now, I kind of did the opposite of what I needed to do. I need to in inverse that. So I'm going to hit undo, command Z. You know, subsequently, you only get one undo in Photoshop, but if you've got your layer or your history, if you go to window and show history, then it opens up your history box. And these are all the individual things that you've done. So if I don't want to do that lasso, I could click and drag it to this trash can, and it will it will undo it. But, you know, I want to keep that. Okay, so what I'm going to do to select the inverse or select the background instead of me because I don't want to delete me, right? I'm going to go up here and go to select inverse. Okay, the dancing ants means that something is selected so I can select the inverse. Now you'll notice that the background is highlighted or selected and I can hit delete. All right, so we're getting closer. Obviously, this isn't perfect. What I'm going to do is uh, next is show you the magnetic lasso tool. Click and hold where the original lasso tool is and go get the one at the bottom. That's the magnetic lasso tool. I guess the shortcut is L. You can toggle through them with L, but the magnetic lasso tool magnetizes on lines, okay? So every once in a while you do have to click to kind of reset the points. But this is kind of a cool tool to use, and it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to do one more mask technique that'll kind of make it the lines crisper but so you know you go around and you trace yourself and in the essence of time I'm just gonna kinda of skip over here to this one that I've already traced perfectly and so you'll you'll trace around yourself and then if you just hit delete you're like oops uh, I don't want to delete myself so you undo that and remember to go to select inverse and then you can hit delete okay so it's starting to get a little better you know um, I, I got some problems. I, I, I deleted the bottom, but that's okay because we'll push it towards the bottom of the screen. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm not ready to, to delete the background yet because, look, I deleted part of my finger, so I'm going to undo that. And after you get it kind of roughly mapped out with the, the magnetic tool, get your dancing ants. And You guys, this magnetic tool can go crazy, so just sometimes it's better just to restart. You know, you can hit com uh, Command-D to deselect and just try it again, just practice with the tool is what we're doing. But I can also turn on the mask tool or the mask option which is at the very bottom of the timeline. It's below the white and black squares or at the very bottom. So I click on that and now whatever is selected turns this red color. Alright, so what I can do is I could go get the paintbrush and I could add a little bit more red here to the bottom. Okay, because I had some dancing ants on there. And of course I need to make my brush a little bigger because that's going to take a little too long. Okay, so now I'm painting this bottom part red. And what that's going to do is include it within the selection. Okay, and here, my hair, I'll get a little bit more of my, my dew up here. And then I'll get the tip of my finger, all right? And I kind of need to change my brush size a little bit. But now when I cut masking off, okay, that's closer. That's closer. Now, for those of you guys that want to be super detail-oriented, you know, get your zoom tool. 
And we're going to zoom in a little bit now. Look, I want to erase this red because I just want the red to be on my finger. So instead of the brush tool, I'll get the eraser tool. And I'll take away the red that's on the background. So it's kind of a give and a take. It's, it's you know, which area do you want to keep? Which area do you want to delete? Um, I'm not going to spend tons of time on this because remember, this is going to be a lower third graphic. So it's, oops, it's not going to be very large, and so I don't have to be that detail oriented. And of course, if I was doing this professionally, I would probably spend more time, but I'm going to click, double click on the magnifying glass, and that kind of takes me back out to, to normal zoom mode, to normal view 100% make it a little bigger. Okay, now when I turn off masking, really only what I need to delete is selected. So it's it's just a way to kind of tighten it up. And remember, you can go from making $20 an hour to making $2 an hour real quick if you hang out in Photoshop too long. So, you know, let go of some of that control. Uh, the client might not even know that you spent, you know, 10 minutes on the graphic instead of two hours. Clients are sometimes easy to please, sometimes they're not, but just be careful of the time that you spend in uh, Photoshop. Okay, so it looks pretty good. It could be better, but you know, it looks pretty good. Now we've got to save this sucker to the server, and we probably should have saved it a little bit earlier in case something crashed, but we're going to save it now. File, Save As. Okay, now I'm actually not hooked up to the server because I'm working from home. So I'm going to save this to my folder that I've specified for this project. And it is called Screen Capture Movie. All right. So I'm going, to, I'm going to save it in here. But before I save it, when you bring Photoshop documents into Final Cut Pro, they come in as timeline layers. Okay, so if I were to save this as a PSD, dot PSD Photoshop, you know, see up here, dot PSD, well, it'll bring it in as a timeline in Final Cut Pro, which is not a big deal, but it means an extra step. It means I have to open up that timeline, copy and paste it from that timeline into the timeline where I'm working. Okay? I could also save it as a PNG. The PNG also, also is going to maintain this transparency in this alpha channel. Okay? And of course, maybe I'll name it something a little more easy to work with, like, you know, BIF ID. And um, notice it's .png, not .psd. That's just a little time saver. Okay, interlacing. PNG is a portable network graphic designed for the internet. And if you've ever gone to a website and the image has kind of been out of focus and then it slowly kind of starts to go into focus, I'm pretty sure that's what interlacing is. I'm going to hit none. Okay, so this thing is saved now to the correct location, which he, for you guys is your student folder on the Terablock on the Facilis Terablock server. Do not save it to the desktop. Um, save it to the server. All right, 